right to life is a fundamental human liberty protected under the Human Rights Act. And no person shall be deprived of its personal liberty arbitrarily or unlawfully. As stated under Article 5 of the Federal Constitution, no person shall be deprived of its personal liberty unless in accordance with the law. Moving on to the scope of right to life. A right not to be deprived of life by unlawful killing. Because a killing may be arbitrary even if it is not unlawful. For example, a killing conducted by a law enforcement may be permissible, but it may be arbitrary if it is conducted in unreasonably or without a warning or without a chance to surrender. Second is the protection from wrongful death due to negligent conduct. And there may be two wrongful death, which is intentional and unintentional. And intentional wrongful death may be could be a person attacking another person that leads to his death but unintentional could be a medical negligence for example then we have right to livelihood which enable peace security justice and dignity and this right apply to all men women children to have more dignified and more productive livelihood moving on we have right to healthy environment because in order for a continuation of life it depends on the harmonious relation of ecosystem and environment they are entitled for this right for a healthy and productive life along with the nature as stated under principle one of the stockholm declaration in the case of art he was lawfully detained by the two officers so there would be no issue of unlawfully detention to intervene with the provision even though farid had the right to liberty but under certain restriction he may be legally under detention and this is because the officer had suspected on reasonable grounds that farid had committed the crime which is drug trafficking and farid has the right for personal freedom under article 5 so he must be protected from unreasonable detention farid's right to life had been violated here by the two officers when they had a abused him under the police custody that caused him to have lung inflammation and lead to his death. Nadia, Farid's wife, may file a civil lawsuit against um, the two police officers whom under the authority of Police Darjah Malaysia and Government of Malaysia respectively as the first and second defendant in her lawsuit for causing the death of a detainee under the um, custody intentionally claiming that authority failed to supervise the officers that lead to the abuse of power by them under the supervision of the police officer farid's rights should be protected in the sense of security health and welfare as it is his basic right um, however the officers failed to comply with the limitations on the use of power against the detainee which is somehow resulting to his death Postmortem proof that Farid had suffered bronchopneumonia and inflammation on the lung that caused his death. And this matter had showed that Farid was brutally abused by the police officers under his custody and they had violated his right to life as a person and a detainee. And the authority, which is the Police Director Malaysia, shall take full responsibility uh, by punishing or expelling two of the officers involved in the matter and to pay damages to Farah as a compensation. And this is because Farid is entitled on the right to human treatment uh, under detention even he was suspected or of committing a crime and he shall be treated humanly and with dignity. Therefore, Farid's right to life have been violated as a basic human rights by the authority and Nadia may take legal action against the defendants to compensate uh, her situation because they have caused death without no justification and excuses on party. Conclusion: All Malaysians in general are entitled to a right to life and no one shall be deprived of its own liberty. The detaining authority owes a duty of care to each and every person that they arrest and detain. This duty of care requires the detaining authority to ensure that the person is sufficiently monitored and that nothing happens to the detained person during the period of detention. And government shall adopt and comply uh, with the United Nations standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. Compliance with the fundamental rights and freedoms is one of the most important problems of the new international order. In, in order to ensure an effective protection and also in order to reduce all facts that could lead to the violation of the right to life, states the only entities having the appropriate measures and appropriate means to do it should reconsider policy and should adopt efficient means of protection of this right. And that's all for me. Thank you.